Hey my lovelies and welcome to another pick a card reading and today's topic is going to be what do you need to know now. I was guided to do another one of these so um, we're going to go ahead and do it. Um, on the screen are three options. You can go ahead and make your selection as I go through my spiel. Um, of course if you'd like to check out your monthly zodiac readings or your general forecast for the rest of the year, your love <coughs> excuse me, forecast for the rest of the year, you can go ahead and check out the Vimeo links below to view those. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, link to that information can be found below as well. Follow me on Instagram at Serene Dream Things for daily guidance. And um, let's go ahead and get in. Oh, of course, this is a general reading. It's not going to resonate with everyone. So only take what resonates. Leave what does not. Reverse the messages if that's how it fits your situation. We're going to go ahead and begin with group one. Okay, so for those who chose envelope number one, what do you need to know right now? Okay, what I'm picking up is like a child, like a child being more not to touch the hot stove, like the fire on the stove. And so what I'm getting from that is a warning, like stay away from things that can hurt you, that could burn you. Um, I feel like the, there's a lot of temptation around you right now. And yeah, you're being advised to resist it at every turn. Because I feel like right now it's very crucial that you stay on path, that you stay on course. Because any any giving giving in to any temptation at this point um, might just change the course of your life. So what you do have planned ahead of you, what you do have coming for you that is good, you might change your fortune into something that is not so good. <clears throat> if you give in to any, to any of the temptation that is floating around you right now. It's like there's a big, strong energy of temptation. I feel like it is, it's almost like I'm getting that, um, like when Jesus was on the, uh, like out in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and he was tempted by Satan and Satan told him like, I can give you all of this, show him like the kingdom if you just bow to me. I'm getting that. So I feel like you are possibly getting tempted with offers that sound very good, maybe are, you know, what you've been dreaming of your whole life it's 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 like it's all being offered to you but it's being offered in a package that is fleeting it's like you can have it's like you had these ideas and dreams um for a long time and i feel like they're all being handed to you on a platter but it's like a too good to be true energy. It really is too good to be true because if you were to go ahead and take a bite out of any of that on that on that's on that platter, it's like it's like biting into an apple and it looks all shiny and red and and good, and then you bite into it and it's a bunch of maggots. I feel like if you go ahead and give into that temptation, not only are you going to change the course of your life for the worse. I get that you are also going to realize that whatever you accepted or indulged in is not as great as you thought it would be, is not going to feel the way you thought it would feel. Yeah, I'm getting like you're almost there. As long as you resist, as long as, because you're so close to the goal. The temptation is coming at you very hard at this time. You are being tempted so hard because you're right, like you're right, like I want to say like inches away or even centimeters away from your goal. Like you're so close. If you just keep focus, you're going to be one of the happiest people on earth or some of the happiest people on earth because this is going to apply to multiple people. I am picking that up. It just keep your head down, stay the course, focus, continue to work hard and pursue your goal. 
And I feel like in the meantime, with all this temptation flying at you, you need to make sure that you armor yourself properly. So how that would work out is you making sure that you stay prayed up, making sure that, you know, whatever it is you do to protect yourself, you know, everybody got their own little thing. Um, me personally, it would be prayer. But yeah, just get like however you're used to armoring yourself, you need to go ahead and double down on that because it's getting heavy out here. And you're going to be so amazed when you do reach the goal. You're going to be so amazed at exactly everything that you get. So you could stop at this this place where the temptation is on the platter for you and it, it, it seems like everything you could ever want. And you could have all of that and it not be as good. Or you could wait. I'm getting like delayed gratification. You can wait a little while longer and then have even more than you ever dreamt of. I feel like when you reach that goal, it's going to feel beyond amazing. You're not even going to believe everything that comes with it. Because how, whatever you've been dreaming about, I feel like it's going to be more. You know, even if it is exactly what you want, I feel like it's going to feel like more than you dreamt it will feel like. It's just going to be this overwhelmingly amazing feeling that feels like a dream come true as opposed to you biting into the temptation apple and getting maggots you know when it looks good on the outside but it's all decayed and rotten on the inside so yeah it's like stay the course um stay the course and i know it's hard i get like you all are in this the temptation is so heavy and I feel like it's so hard for you. Like you almost want to give in. Like you almost want to. It's almost like a person who's on the outside of a window of like a bakery starving. And, you know, you're looking at all of this food, all of these tasty treats. This, you know, beautifully baked bread and all these pastries and stuff. And you just want to go inside and have some you know like you want to have it so bad because it but the thing you don't know about that bakery is that um it's poison it's like all the treats you see all the the food and the bread it's like it's it's laced with poison but you don't know that i mean that's what I compare the temptation to. It's like you're seeing all of this stuff and you can go inside the bakery and enjoy all of it, but you're going to die because it's poisonous. Or you can just keep on walking a little bit longer in the cold and then you get to, you know, a big feast that is all you can eat of more than just pastries and bread. Like you have every type of food you can imagine. That's what I'm kind of envisioning in my head with the choices that you have here. But yeah, I feel like right now as you're looking at the temptation, it just looks very good. It's like, it's very shiny. It looks like what you could want, what you've been wanting. And you're like, I don't know how much longer I could hold out on this because I'm hungry. Like I want a taste of this. But don't give in to it. Again, as I got at the beginning, like, Stay away from the fire because you will get burned. That's the message here. And I feel like there are so many like traps or trappings planted on your path to try to get you to uh, get off course and stay away from your goal. And these trappings can come in the form of many things. They can come in the form of um, opportunities that you may think are a dream come true, but they're actually not. Um, they could come in the form of people who look good on the outside, but they could actually be um, a damage to your um, well-being. You know, they could be people who uh, could ultimately ruin you in some way or uh, turn against you or be harmful to you in some way. This could be anything. I just get like everything you could possibly imagine. It's almost like somebody is in your head and they're... Uh, creating this simulation of every desire that's in your head and putting it on your path. That's what I'm getting. It's like the enemy is really, um, and I feel like it's, the enemy is not able to read your mind. 
when I say the enemy, I mean Satan. He's not he's not able to read your mind, but what I am getting is that he's able, like he knows your patterns. He knows, like he pokes and he sees what you react to. And then he produces more of that um, to get you to trip over yourself, to get you to fall. And I feel like that's what he's doing. It's like he's poking you and he's seeing what you react to. And he's like, okay, let's do more of that. Let's put more of that on this person's path so they never get to the finish line. So with you knowing that and having that in your mind, it's like you have to make sure um, you have to make sure you keep that in your mind so that you can make it to the goal. Because if you fall for any of the trappings, you'll never make it to the goal. And you are definitely going to regret it. Because like I said, you have... You're going to change the course of your whole life. It's like you're going to ruin your fortune. I just get like you have so much. You have so much at stake. That's what I want to say. You have so much in store for you and you just have to wait a little bit longer. But the lack if you just give in and you don't maintain your patience, you don't maintain your focus. It's like you're going to ruin all of that. And I just get like you're going to be a very... It's almost like you're going to become like a, a shell of your former self because after giving in to these trappings, you're never going to be the same. All you're going to think about is how you could have waited a little bit longer and gotten to the finish line, but you weren't able to get there because you fell for this. That was poisonous. That wasn't good. That wasn't, you know, uh, the desire you thought it would be like it looked like it could be, but then you bit into it and it was disgusting it was rotten and so yeah it's like don't end up being the person that regrets what could have been and what they could have had when you could just wait a little longer and actually get all of that so this group what i'm picking up is more of a warning because i just get that you're right in the midst of some sort of turning point and it's just a lot of energy being thrown at you But I do feel like you have God's protection very strongly around you. So it's just a matter of you doing your part and God will do his. He will see you through as long as you continue to surrender to his guidance. If you decide to depart from his guidance and I said, go ahead and give in to these trappings and temptation, it's like he's not going to be able to cover that. He's not going to be able to cover you because you would have gotten off his path. As long as you remain on his path, he will guide you and protect you. You giving into the trappings is not because these trappings you have to. It's not because they're really blocking your way. It will be because you're actually going off, veering off to the side to indulge in it. So it's like your path is clear, but these trappings, this, this temptation is lining the road. So you're seeing all of it, but they can't get in your way because of God's protection over you. But you can make the choice to go off to the sides and indulge with all these trappings and temptation and that. If you are, if you do that, that's where you're going to mess up and that's where you're going to change the course of your life. God is going to remove that protection from you and you're going to end up almost like in this place of ruin um, because again, everything that was in store for you is going to be taken away. The finish line is going to be removed and that you're just going to be on this lonely, desolate, abandoned road. Um and all that stuff that seems shiny lining the rose is going to turn into rotten apples and you're going to see that it wasn't worth it. So, yeah, that's what I get for you, group one. Very interesting. Let's move on to group two. What is it, what is it that you need to know? Okay, give me a moment. I have the timestamp. Okay, for those who chose envelope number two, what do you need to know right now? You are so much bigger than you can imagine. I feel like you, either you don't really know who you are or you do know who you are, but you run away from it. I feel like a number of you have an idea of who you are, like, but you don't like to embrace it. It's almost like you're afraid of like your true power. 
and you try to hold on to like a smaller, lesser version of yourself because you feel like that that makes you comfortable. It makes you feel, I don't know, it makes you, I don't know why I'm getting this energy of like, those who chose this group, you don't want to stand out. At least not in the way that your power would make you stand out. Like, you probably like to dress different, do little quirky things. But I get like with this group that you don't, like as far as your power is concerned, you have some awareness of it, but you don't like to tap into that part of yourself because you think it's going to make you too large in comparison to the environment around you and you don't want to stand out that much. But I feel like you're reaching a point where you're not going to have any choice because it's like you're being called, commanded even, um, to grow. To, to What I'm getting, it's not even growing. I feel like you're already in this power. It's just like you have to stand up in it. It's like you've been crouching, you've been sitting and like balling yourself up to try to blend with what's around you. But it's like God is commanding you to stand up. And when you stand up, you realize that you're so much taller than everything and everyone around you. You're like a giant when it comes to power. And I feel like that's what you've been afraid of. I'm hearing all of your life. You don't want to be seen in that way. You, It's like you don't want to attract that kind of attention to yourself. Because you're afraid of what you could come up against if people actually saw who you are and you're like no i don't want that kind of attention but this is literally who you're who you are like who you're meant to be and who you're meant to display how you're meant to be displayed in this in this life I feel like this is how you're going to get everything that it is you've been wanting. All the things that you dreamt, you can't reach those points without standing up in your true power and accepting who you are, embracing who you truly are. And I feel like the more you resist, um you embracing your true power is like the more you're going to receive forms of punishment so it's like god is commanding you to stand up but if you resist it's like you're gonna you suffer these little consequences every time he has to say it again it's like a a parent calling out to their child to like come to them and a child is just sitting back, chilling in their room and not responding to the parent. And the parent is like, if I have to call your name again, you're going to get it. And so I just feel like with you, there has been some time that God has been calling you to stand up in your power and you've been resisting. And as a result, you've been suffering these little consequences because you're refusing to obey his command. But I feel like you're not going to be able to resist much longer. And you're going to figure out that every... I feel like you're trying to find a way around doing this and to still get what it is you want. But you're going to realize that you you honestly literally cannot get what it is you're desiring if you don't stand up first. And I feel like the longer you resist, the darker your path is going to become. Right now it's light, but I get like that light is slowly dimming the longer you take to travel down the path. It's like going on travels by foot in the daytime and, you know, in the forest, let's say. Let's just make it a little bit more difficult. You're going on travels in the forest in the daytime, but, you know, you only have a set amount of hours to make it through that forest before it gets dark and you don't know what you're going to encounter in that forest because you can't see you don't know what you're stepping on you're not aware of your surroundings because you don't have the light helping you so that's what i'm getting here it's like you have this light on your path for you to go ahead and move in the way that god is commanding you to but the longer you resist it's like you're losing the sun you're losing the light so you don't want to take too long or else that light is going to go away um, indefinitely and you won't be able to see a thing. So the way that you've been trying to move, it's like you won't be able to move at all. 
not without facing some sort of danger or consequence because you don't know where you're going. See, right now the guidance is clear, but I feel like if you let the light go out, like you won't hear any more guidance. You won't see any more light. And you're just going to be taking a risk every time you take a step because you're going to be doing it on your own with no help, no assistance, no markers to tell you which way to go. And while you may be afraid of embracing this power within you, I feel like when you do it, like when you put that crown on, and I do get that when that crown goes on, it's for good. So you're not going to be able to go back down. And that could be the part that scares you the most is that once you go toward this, you can never go back. But I feel like once you put that crown on, it's going to feel a little bit bittersweet. Um, sweet because it feels amazing. Um, the fact that you know, you're in this place, you can feel you're in God's presence, you're you're in your purpose, you're being who you're called to be, who you're meant to be in this life. But it's a little bitter because I feel like with that comes a little bit more responsibility that you weren't sure you were ready for. But um but God decided that you are ready. You are actually ready, but you just told yourself in your mind that you're not ready for all of this. So when you get there, you're like, yay, but it's just a little bit, I don't know if I wanted to get here right now. Like I, like you probably felt like you needed a little bit more time to play or, you know, analyze things, go back and forth in your head over what it is you need to do. You felt like you needed a little bit more work because I get like how you're being commanded. Like you're being commanded, but you've been resisting so far. But I feel like at some point it's like I'm seeing God like take his hand and just pick you up and put you where he wants to have you, where he feels you need to be. And when you get there, it's like <gasps> it's like you're just shocked. Like you have this shock to your system because it's just you went from that point to this point and the the distance between the two points is just so far um it's like drastically different lives seemingly overnight and when you get to that new place you're going to be feeling a little out of sorts because you're going to be thinking to yourself like i needed just a little bit more work to get here i don't think i'm fully prepared for this but like i say you actually are prepared for this you don't need any more time to figure things out. You don't need any more work. I feel like everything it is that you needed to have to be prepared for this, you've already acquired that. So God, at this point, just needed you to move. I feel like your past is about to become a distant memory. So I feel like as a result, you might be leaving some people in your past. And when you think of these people, you can only remember it. I feel like there's not, it's almost like your past or your emotional memory of your past is going to be erased. So you're not even going to remember like what life was like before you got to this new point. Like all the things you used to crave, all the things that you used to do that maybe felt amazing. You're not going to enjoy them anymore. You know, everything about your mindset and the way you go about life is just going to shift completely and you're not going to miss your old life. At first, you're going to tell yourself that you're missing your old life. But when you try to recall it, like in your emotional memory, like imagine what it feels like, you're not going to be able to feel that joy or connection to your past anymore. You can't remember it in your mind, but I feel like that's where it stops. Like your mind and your emotions in regards to your past are going to be very disconnected. And all you can connect to at this point is your present where you are now once you're moved to this new point. But what I can say with this group is that the presence of God's presence that you have over you 
is going to be so warming, welcome, and soothing. I feel like it's already like that. But when you get to this new place, it's like you're going to have to rely on God's presence even more because you're going to feel like you can't do this on your own. You don't know the first thing about this new life that you're in. So you're going to be leaning on God a whole lot to kind of walk you through the steps on how to navigate this new part of you, this new life of yours. And as you're doing that, it's like you're going to feel God's presence maybe more than you ever have in your entire life. And it's going to feel so warming, so welcoming, and just so soothing, like the greatest uh, comfort you've ever known. And I feel like you're going to become almost addicted to that feeling. And um, because what I was hearing is the Nate Dogg song, never leave me alone, never leave me alone. Leave me alone. So yeah, I get like, you don't want God to leave you alone. Like in this place, you like, you, you like, I need you so much. You can't leave me alone here. You need to stay with me and help me figure this out all the way through. So yeah, that's what I got for group two. Let's move on to group three. Okay, timestamp is here. Okay, so for those who chose envelope number three, what do you need to know right now? I immediately got the song. Um, it's an Usher. It might be another song, but I'm getting like the Usher song. I pay a penny for your thoughts. A nickel for your kiss. I will. So yeah, I feel like somebody wants to know what someone else is thinking. They feel like this person feels like they're in the dark about where someone stands and um it's like they want to figure out what the other person is thinking and so they can know how to move going forward it's like they don't want to make a move or do anything until they know what the other person is going to do it's like you make a move then i'll make a move but i need to know what your move is first and then i can tell you it's like two people meeting up and saying like they both have something to discuss with each other, but they want the other one to go first because if the other one says something that doesn't match what they want to say, they want to have the opportunity to change it and say and match more what the person is saying. So, yeah, I feel like someone is just like a little bit afraid of like making a move without knowing where the other person stands, where they are in this situation. This person might want to make an offer. But I get like the other person involved in this, um, they're not sure, they're either not sure that this person's interested in what they have to offer, or if this or or if this offer is up to this person's standards. So yeah, this person just kind of wants to know, like they just want to know somehow. And I feel like this person, this could be someone who's looking into you. They're just kind of looking around for clues on like what it is that's going on inside your mind about them, about the situation. I'm getting like getting something but let me look it up to be sure give me a moment guys i'm sorry yeah okay I feel like this person is not only are they looking to try to figure out where the what the other person is thinking and where they stand on the situation, but I feel like they are in some way kind of hoping and praying that it's in their favor. So this person, in the meantime, while they're trying to find these clues on where this other person stands, it's like they're reaching out to a higher power at the same time to pray that this person's Heart and mind is on one accord with their own. I'm getting like somebody is saying a, somebody is saying like a desperate prayer, like 
God, please, like, I'll get myself together. Like, I won't do this no more. I won't do that no more. It's like somebody is sitting there having like a talk with God and just kind of promising to give up so much stuff that um, if they can just get what they, if they could just have this situation turn out in their favor. So you have this person who's like, God, you know, if you just do me this one solid, I won't do this no more. I'll get myself together. You know, just please don't let me lose this chance. Don't let me lose this opportunity. That's what I'm picking up. Somebody is saying that kind of prayer right now. This could be someone saying that about you or this you could be the person saying that about someone else. Now, the person who this other person is kind of wondering about, like wondering what they're thinking, I feel like that person, the other person is kind of like uh, being waited on. That person is like in the middle of doing something, like they're in the middle of a big transformation. They have something really big going on that's independent of this other person that's wondering what's going through their head. But I feel like the person is like waiting to get some kind of answer on what this person is thinking. They have no clue this person is going through this. This person has like something, it's some big, huge transformation, some kind of something. It's going to vary from person to person, but this person has something massive energetically going on some kind of huge shift that this other person has no idea about and that's why this other person feels like they're in the dark because i get like what's going on here is that um this other person is kind of like so focused on this big like this massive shift that they're not really focused on this situation with this other person it is not to say that they don't they're not interested in that person. That's not really what I'm picking up. But I get like their focus or their main focus is whatever this massive energy shift is that's in the works for them. But the person that's over there waiting and wondering what this person is thinking, they just think maybe this person isn't interested. Maybe I lost my chance. Maybe I don't have an opportunity anymore. Or maybe I never did. They're thinking that because they don't see this person's focus on them. And they don't know it's because this person just has something very big going on that um, they almost can't take their attention away from it because it's that big. It demands like their immediate attention. Something is in the works here. It's almost like someone is in a mad dash to Someone is in a mad dash against something or someone else to reach some kind of goal. And while I feel like the opponent in this situation, like they've, this person has like a lot of, like they won a lot. This other person that they're going against, they haven't won a lot or they probably have never won anything but if they get this particular goal it's like they would have won everything so all that other stuff that the opponent won before it wouldn't even matter like whatever these people are going out for whatever goal they're trying to reach it is literally the equivalent to everything for everyone involved. It doesn't matter what they had before. It doesn't matter how many wins they had before. It's like losing this means they took the greatest L of all time. And winning this means they just won the greatest thing in life. And I just get that with this, these two people are in a mad dash to reach this goal because they feel like they can't afford this loss. So yeah, there's some kind of competition going on here as well. I feel like it's not the two people I was picking up on earlier. Like I got that, oh, you know what I'm getting? The person that's going through like the massive energy shift, I feel like they might be the person that these two people are vying for, that these two people are trying to get. And I feel like these two people might be in competition for that person, but this person is going through the massive energy shift that they're competing for. They're not really giving either of these competitors um, 
attention because again, they have something too big going on to really be concerned about what they would consider to be small potatoes in comparison. But these two people that are competing against each other, it's like they're in a mad dash to get to this person or win this person over because they feel like having this person would be the greatest thing um, in life for them. But these two people, they're very interesting. They're like night and day. I feel like they have complete opposite personalities. I feel like they have complete, completely different strategies in their approach to winning this. I don't feel like these two people have much of anything in common. So the person that they're competing for, that person making a choice between, and I get, oh my gosh, that's why I was picking up that someone is trying to get in someone's head and figure out like what they're thinking, you know, what will be enough? Are they interested? Because, because these two competitors are so different, they're like night and day. I feel like one of the competitors is like, I don't even know what they're going to go for because when I'm looking at my opponent I'm nothing like them do they like more of that person or do they like more of someone like me that's what they're trying to figure out so that's what they want to get in this person's head and figure out like where they stand what they're into what kind of offer would they be into because they just can't judge it based on their their opponent because it's it's just, they're too opposite and I feel like this confuses I feel like it confuses both competitors, but it's like one person in particular who was like really, like they really want to win and they really want to do this right. And yeah, so this could be two people competed, two people competing over you, or you could be one of these competitors competing for somebody else, or it doesn't have to be a person. It could also be something else some other opportunity you could be com competing for some sort of job opportunity possibly but yeah i just get that who you're up against or who this person is up against it's you're just so different from them or they're just so different from each other that it just doesn't make any sense you're wondering like how was the selection process even formulated because logically speaking you feel like if there if this is going to be a choice as far as like romantic options are concerned you feel like a person should have somewhat of a type and yet with the competitors involved it feels like this person has no type so that's why that's what's confusing someone involved here because it's like this person is like you know this person is like a nerd and I'm a jock. This person is, <clears throat> you know, bigger, I'm skinnier. This person, you know, is richer, I'm poor. It's like, it doesn't, nothing, there's no comparison between these two people. And it's just, I just get like, one of the competitors are just really confused by it. The other person is kind of like, not that concerned about the competition. Like they might, a little bit just want some insight on whether or not you know they could actually win this thing but i'm not getting that they're so concerned about the competitor like this other person is but i get that it was created like this for a reason both of these people if this is some sort of competition for a person both of these people were divinely guided to this person and i feel like this person accepted both people for exactly who they were how they are and um so yeah it wasn't necessarily like a, a picking like oh i like that person because you know they look like this or they do this for a living or whatever it wasn't i feel like this person didn't um connect with these people for those superficial reasons it was more of a divine thing it was like a divine hookup like god just push these two people you know to where this person is they here take them and this person just took them on like okay i'll take them i have them both you know and i just feel like it's just been like a competition or it is a competition going on right now ever since yeah it is definitely some sort of competition going on here but it's one person that's really in one of the competitors is really in their head over like how they could win this thing or whether they even have a chance because they just don't know what the person likes or what they're looking for what they're into 
and I feel like this person doesn't give them much to work with again because they're so focused on this other thing that's going on in their life this massive energy shift so they're giving very little attention to the competitors it's like they understand this competition is going on but it's like they'll announce the winner when it's time but they're not necessarily watching the race it's like when the two, whoever reaches the finish line, they're there to hand off the trophy, but they're not watching the race the whole time because they're like, I got to focus on this. Yeah, but somebody is really worried. Somebody is really worried about the competition here and it's depressing them to a, a level that is um, that's kind of making them go crazy. Like they're a little bit losing their mind because they really want to win this, but again, they just feel like they can't they can't even create a strategy because they don't know where to start when it comes to this person and their likes and dislikes. They almost want to give up, but I feel like they aren't going to. Every time they're going to want to shut down, they're just going to be like, no, I can't give up right now. So yeah, what you need to know here is that this there is some kind of competition going on. Either you're involved in the comp competition as a competitor or these people are competing for you. But there is going to be a winner declared. But before it gets to that point, somebody is really in their head about it and wondering if they even have a chance. Other person is kind of calm, cool, and collected. Um, but I'm not really getting what the outcome is going to be. And I don't think I meant to because I feel like spirit is wanting... It to kind of be a mystery and that be figured out when the time comes it's like they don't want to give a heads up to the winner they don't want to i feel like god doesn't want to manipulate the competition in any way he wants it to be fair and square so the person that's making the selection he's not going to tell them who to pick and neither is he going to tell either of the competitors how to win um it's like just run the race fair and square. Whoever gets to the end, that's who the that's who the selection is. Um, the selector gives the trophy to. That's it. But I feel like everything else in between isn't allowed. Like everything as far as the outcome is not meant to be revealed at this time because he wants everything to be fair and square. Okay. So that's about all I have for you all for this pick a card reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you'd like to check out your monthly zodiac readings or your general forecast for the rest of the year or your love forecast for the rest of the year, you can go ahead and check out the Vimeo links below to read those. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, link to the information below as well. Follow me on Instagram at Serene Dream Things um, for daily guidance. And um, I'll be back with my readings, lovelies. Bye.